Yeah, the word of the Lord is here for you again and is a powerful message for you. And I want you to pay attention as the word of the Lord control his servant this hour. God bless you and subscribe to it. It's growth. Number five, six, six, impact and contribution. The sixth and final psychological need of all men is the need to be perceived as one who is impactful and one whose life is counted. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Sir, I understand this is you and your wife. Please come. Let's celebrate them. Keep clapping. Honor them. Come on, house on the rock. Please come, sir. I won't embarrass you. I won't. Please stand. Keep clapping. I didn't ask you to stop. You just keep clapping. Don't stop. Do what I'm asking you to do. Don't stop. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Do you know what you just did to them? You kept clapping. They have a right to interpret your clap to be anything. For some, your clap means you are important. For some, your clap means look how beautiful your family is. For some, your clap means that as you performed your role as husband and wife here in the capacity of ministers, you did an excellent job. For some, it just means you are dressing well. You leave them, it is their creativity that defines the meaning of your clap. But in any sense, you have won their love for you by giving them a sense of value. I brought them out to define for you the highest psychological need of any man. That the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved, to feel appreciated, and to feel important. This is what was communicated in your club. Now, can I tell you, now that I am the midwife to make this happen, talk against me and see how they will respond. Are we together? Yes. For making them feel good. I just asked them to come out so that you will learn. A miracle happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you make people feel that they count in a home in an organization you have five children you make one feel like a champion and the remaining feel like failures is the negative of what is happening right now that you're doing every time i gather with my leaders they celebrate me for what you know god is doing and i tell them ladies and gentlemen we are here as a team i only succeed because of the coordinated effort of everyone and i want you to know that you count you matter are we together now and you do that they will usually act like nothing is happening but a miracle is happening right there hallelujah before i came up reverend edwin introduced me and he said wonderful things and you all clapped and i was happy me i don't hide it i will smile and say i'm grateful are we together now so you ask me to come back again i will most likely come back why because i love jesus but number two when you help people see that they matter, they will love you. You become Beulah and Hephzibah in a moment. Hallelujah. So if I tell Madam now and Pastor, I said, look, um, what, what, what's your meal in this city? I mean, serious, what, what's your Igbo meal in this? Is it Abacha? I thought it was Swallow. Ah. Bitter Leaf. Okay, you are right. Whatever you said, you are right. <laughs> Praise God. Are we together? Now, if I'm coming to their house and I say, Madam, I'm coming to eat. The memory of how I made her feel. Now, you imagine that I reverse it now. I insult this woman, insult her husband, tear them down, make them feel like they are not counting in house on the rock. And I say, I'm coming to their house. Number one, I will sit outside. My chair will be waiting for me before I arrive. You know, there are people who share, you just put it under a tree there and the water they will drink is right there. Thank you. Let's honor him again. And the wife. Hallelujah. 
There are people today whose children are not proud of because every time they are around you, you are going to look for something wrong. Why is this shirt not ironed? They came to say good afternoon and you must find something wrong. Learn to let people know that they count. And this is especially true for spiritual people because they are focused on the prayer, the anointing, and the people do their best. They fix up the place for prayer and you don't see it. We are focusing on Jesus, they don't see it. Your wife dresses, she gives her best. It's true you are going for a prayer meeting, but take out time to see. Mm -mm. And women, you too, the man too, does his best, at least the best he knows to do. It may not be your best, but the best, and then you are not seeing it. Last week, the battery of his watch died. This week, he had fixed it. You didn't see the difference. <laughs> are we together? Can I tell you the truth? There is always tension when someone's worth is downplayed. In many, everywhere you find tension in an organization, it is because someone is intentionally downplaying another person. That is why in complimenting people, psychologically, leaders, if you want to lift someone and compliment the person uniquely, start by sharing a general compliment first so that everybody can serve the one you gave then they will now join you to uniquely appreciate that one person over celebrating one person in the presence of people is dangerous no matter how effective i know that you have one child who is always taking first position while the rest share the rest be careful are we together now don't over celebrate that one and say this is daddy's boy give me five the remaining are what now and you see you are doing something to them i pray for you you pray for me i love you i need you to survive i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to survive see that for some of you this is the cure go back to your fellowship go back to your home and call a meeting and say i just came back from a leadership meeting in house on the rock as the father now if i were you this is what i would do sit your children down let all of them be ready to listen to you by acknowledging fault yes, sir. if you say sorry nobody will listen i take responsibility i know better now than i used to know thanks to church and i really want to apologize for the many ways that you may have been hurt without my knowledge i intend for the good of this family but we are products of our mindset i'm not ashamed of growing and you see your child losing wow that is accepting fault for the first time in 12 years I'm, tempt, I'm tempted to teach you four expressions. I was doing a training for a few people. I've done it for my people and then in South Africa. Let me teach you. There are four expressions. Use them this night. Use them now. And you will watch the miracle that happens in your life. Can I give it to you? Number one, please. P-L-E-A-S-E. -E. Everyone, write it down. You will be surprised how many doors the word please will open for you Nigerians learn it please say it please. one more time please. in the name of Jesus say it please. please is an expression of courtesy you become an exceptional leader when you learn to use the word please these are miracle expressions when you tell people please it's a sign of courtesy it adds to strengthening their sense of significance Please, could you shift here? Don't say shift now. And then, ba 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 prayer is going on. Shift. <laughs> Are we together? You pick up a call and you want somebody, you don't, you're out of unit. Call me, call me, call me. And you're off the phone. He never calls you again. And the miracle at the other side of the phone goes with the person's annoyance. One more time, say please. please. To your wife, say it, please. To your husband, to your children, as a man of God, please. A sense of courtesy. Number two, thank you. 
thank you. Not thanks. Thank you. Nigerians, thanks. Someone will spend two weeks begging you for money, harassing you with scripture. The Bible says be good to all men. It says when it is within your power, pastor, you are the one that did this and you finally send the 10,000 naira. Then by night, he now sends one word, thanks. No. No. This is a leadership training. We'll do the miracle service in the night, but this one now, this is a mental miracle service. Is someone learning? Yes. One more time, say thank you. thank you. Don't say thanks. No. If someone is nice and kind to you 20 times, say thank you 20 times. Can I tell you, there are many of you, your partner stopped giving to you because they perceived that you were taking them for granted. When thank you becomes too heavy for your mouth, your account will tell you. Thank you. Thank you. When people treat you well, when God honors you with great membership, tell them thank you. Don't say go. They will go. That's when you will know that a people without a vision, they say without a vision, the people perish. But without the people, the vision will suffer. One more time, say thank you. Go back and tell everybody. Show them the new revelation you found. Say thank you. And you will watch doors open, open, open. You tell someone thank you. They are even surprised. Thank you. To me, what for? Thank you. Thank you. Most people tell only Jesus thank you. And the reason is because they can't see him. It's hypocrisy. That thank you they are saying is because of what they are about to ask. You called me to trade leaders. <laughs> thank you. Can I give you the third? I am sorry. Write it down. Just write. I'm the one teaching. Just write it down. I am sorry. Not sorry. I am sorry. The expression, I am sorry, is a miracle. Look at me, please. Please look at me. Is someone learning? I am sorry puts you in a position where you are vulnerable without shame. That means you let people know that we are all human. We see in part and we prophesy in part that no matter how great, the best of us is still human. When you say, I am sorry, you bring people to a point where they are reminded that just like you, they are human. And that to err is human, we say, but then to forgive is divine. One more time, say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nations have gone to war because one person was too proud to say, I'm sorry. With all due respect, not to play with your mind, but there are marriages today that would have worked if only one person. I am sorry does not mean I'm the one who is wrong. Sometimes it means I'm the one who is wise. I am sorry is not always about the offender offending. Who is now the offender now? English people teach me. Well, one, the person who caused trouble and the person who trouble was caused over. <laughs> Are we together? Say, I'm sorry. Someone who has been sponsoring you and you never acknowledge the person, now the person is pained and angry and you say, are we not humans? That is not, I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry for not being thoughtful. I have learned, I came to church and now I've been mentored and I'm just here to say, I'm sorry. The healing power of I'm sorry is as powerful as the healing anointing. Did you hear what I said? The healing power of I am sorry, what I'm sorry does is almost the same thing as what the healing anointing does. The healing anointing can heal the body, but my goodness, there are souls that can be healed by telling people I'm sorry. The moment you say I'm sorry, the person at the other end becomes foolish if he continues from that point. Because I'm sorry should naturally, not easily, bring an end to all strife. Say I'm sorry again. The last expression, God bless you. As simple as this sounds, it is a miracle. God bless you. God bless you. 
God bless you contains three powerful words. One, God. Two, bless. Three, you. God bless you. Three words that if properly combined can produce a miracle in the mind of the hearers. God bless you. That means you can be better today than you were yesterday because I've introduced God, I've introduced his blessings and it is all directed to you. Listen to me. If you leave this place just learning these four expressions alone, you did not waste your time this morning. It will turn your leadership to a miracle. You will manage crisis. Most people think it's all about just prayer and fasting. No, there are times this is the wisdom of the just that the Bible talks about. Hallelujah. I have used this as a person and in leadership and I have watched it work wonders in my life. Let me give you the last mandate of leaders and then we wrap up for this morning session. Are you ready for number three? I want you to pay attention to this third one. Visionary leaders build models and systems. Visionary leaders build models and systems that guarantee succession and continuity. Visionary leaders build models and systems. Please write it. They build models and systems that guarantee succession and continuity. When everything ends with you or ends with your absence, you failed as a leader. Africa, Africa, may we arise in the name of Jesus. Do you notice that in many families, with all due respect, you will hear that a man in his lifetime was a billionaire and he will make the money in his lifetime, spend it in his lifetime, finish it in his lifetime and die and the next son starts. He doesn't even start from zero. He starts by managing the father's enemies and uses 20 years of his life to tell them sorry before he starts building his own life. This is what we see in Africa. Are we together? Visionary leaders think beyond themselves. They build systems. If your absence collapses a ministry and an organization, it means you are an idol in that ministry. Not a leader. Are we together? Yes. I told my people years ago that if they do not see me, this is way before we left Zaria, that if they do not see me, the only thing they should miss is my unique contribution, not a collapse of the purposes of God leaders look beyond themselves they are passionate about raising transforming followers to leaders and then leaders to agents of transformation i learned that from late dr miles monroe hallelujah who can do what you are doing to allow you rest there are people in their old age they, are they wake up in the morning like young people stressing themselves because they spent their life being so self-centered and they forgot that one day their physical strength will deplete hallelujah who did you raise you became a millionaire you did not reproduce that grace and that understanding in three or four people they would have helped you today that you are resting are we together how about men and women of god isn't it terrible if I'm not able to make church on Sunday and everything goes down because of my absence? It means I've been directing the people to me, not Jesus. Are we together? Leaders build systems. Say systems. Say systems. Say models. I'm very honored when I learned sometimes that Reverend Edwin, you know, he travels, you know, to see his family and, do other, and, and to do other things. And he told me yesterday and he said that a number of times how that in his absence there is already a structure in place that is very powerful and i must commend Igbo people as a nation for having that understanding i think you have a system i see that work even and, and i'm saying that honestly so that a man can start with one store and you know that's a jewish system is still is practiced in israel even up until now yes it's true so one store and then he will get um, um I, if i understand you correctly maybe two or three people and then train them pragmatically the man can travel to china to bring goods 
and the boy is running it and then soon he will establish branches and annexes and they now learn on the job one day he will settle the person and the person can continue that is powerful because the person you are helping may be the one to help you tomorrow are we together yes listen i know that sometimes we treasure the knowledge that we've had through the years because it came through sweat through blood and pain but you must be vulnerable to trust somebody with what you know everybody is not a deceiver and everybody will not fail you do not allow your pain and your scars don't allow the injury to affect you so much that you don't trust anybody don't like elisha i know that we say gehazi was not there to collect elisha's mantle I sympathize with Gehazi, but I also blame Elisha. You can still raise other people. If you raise one and he failed, raise another one. If you raise one and he failed, is that not true? Yes. The power of reproduction is a miracle. The word re means again. If a woman loses her pregnancy, respectfully speaking, there is hope that she can be pregnant again. If you raise somebody and he does not respect you, breaks your heart and goes no problem leave them in peace they will reap what they have sold you start again again is a powerful word again is a powerful word i'm wrapping up with this now visionary leaders sustain the faculty to start again this church is a product of the word again am i right on that i understand the bit of the history of the church and and and, and you know reverend edwin had, had graciously told me the story and i saw that yesterday he would have stayed and you people would have been meeting somewhere outside with a legitimate excuse isn't it amazing i know rain washed your house but have you seen the place for a new land someone say again prophesy to yourself say again you went down spiritually but there is hope for a tree again leaders have the ability to give people a chance to start again and that they themselves can start again i want to end my discussion we're going to pray but this is important for you to know again is a miracle adam knew his wife cain came abel came and then abel, um, cain killed abel remember and then the bible tells us that adam knew his wife again the man went back to business again samson haven't lost your eyes and your hair you still have hands and you still have the God who gives all. You can go back again. Ruth, it is true that the first phase of your family life went down. Lost your husband, lost your children, but you still have Naomi. Always be conscious of what you have left. Because with what you have left, it is enough for that word again. You lost your job, but you still have wisdom. Start again this is a prophetic word god is giving someone you did ministry but because you were wrongly mentored you did a lot of things that you now know are not consistent with scripture don't sit beating yourself crying forever yes you once lived a wayward life for god's sake don't talk about rahab the prostitute when she has become rahab the woman of god there are two rahabs here be mindful of the one you are talking about. Hallelujah. God gives us an opportunity to have the yesterday version of ourselves, today version of ourselves, and tomorrow version of ourselves. You can remain in your yesterday version or you can take advantage of the mystery called again to evolve. Again means evolve. Again means try for a greater version of yourself. Your yesterday version was not anointed, but hallelujah. Thank God for Soul Conference 2023. You can start again. Man of God, you can go back and build that fellowship again. You can build your home again. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. The Bible says, for behold, see, conceive as a reality in your spirit. I do a new thing. In leadership, Reverend Edwin would attest to it and every other leader here. There are moments where you will have to give people a chance. People will make mistakes. Perhaps you as the leader yourself, you will make all kinds and all shades of mistakes. Can I tell you?
the moment you learn your lesson and draw wisdom from your pain you have cheated it lamenting and crying over yesterday you carry 10 million naira and put it in a wrong business and put it in a wrong investment how long will you keep crying hallelujah how long will you keep crying david i know you prayed and prayed and prayed that the child would not die but the child is now dead stop watering a dead plant it is dead start finding seeds quickly before another harvest will come and you have not sown anything you can try to water a dying plant hoping that it will come back but when it is dead it is dead you can use that dead plant as the manure for the next plant and get seeds listen today god has helped us to be leaders not because we had perfect people around us and not because we we're perfect ourselves are we together but this mystery again archive it in your mind add it in the bag that you use to sojourn in destiny you will need it give people a chance to make honest mistakes give people a chance to disappoint you honestly and give them a chance to recover this is what happened if i believe if judas had gone to jesus judas would have become apostle judas i don't know who asked him to kill himself he lost the money he lost his life he lost his bishopric who told Jesus I will not leave you remember he ran away and because of his fear he called a young girl woman because he was running away from Jesus all in an effort to deny Jesus but after all of that he went back to fishing and look at Jesus I like the leader Jesus not just the Savior Jesus Jesus is now back to life and he goes to the seashore and says little children have you any catch not even recognizing it was him he said cast your net to the right side and when they caught so much fish peter discerned who else can do this kind of miracle <laughs>